let your presence come and saturate every part of me. Make me new. Let your spirit come and move within. Fill me once again. I need more. Jesus, I'm desperate for you. Jesus, I'm hungry for you. Jesus, I'm longing for you. Lord, you are all I want. Jesus, I'm desperate for you. Jesus, I'm hungry for you. Jesus, I'm longing for you. desperate for you, Jesus, tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome. Now is the time to worship. Come. Now is the time to give your heart. Come. Just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before your God, come, one day every tongue will confess you are God, one day every knee will bow, still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. the time to worship. Yeah, that's right. Come. Now is the time to give your heart. Come. Just as you are to worship. Come. Just as you are before your One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. So come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to Just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before your God, come. One day every tongue will confess you are God, one day every knee will bow, still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Oh, oh, 
Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, for I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, for I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. In the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing, Holy, 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 to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing, Holy, holy, holy. Well, I feel like praising, praising Him. I feel like praising, praising Him. Praise Him in the morning, praise Him all day long. I feel like praising, praising Him. That's right. You ought to praise the Lord while you have the chance. You ought to praise the Lord while you have the chance.
Salvation is mine. Salvation is mine. Salvation today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Salvation today is mine. Boy, if victory is mine. That's right. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. That's right. Victory today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Amen. Worship the name of 
name of the Lord. Defeated, death couldn't hold you down. We're gonna lift our voice in victory. We're gonna make our voices loud. The enemy has been defeated, death couldn't hold you down. We're gonna lift our heads in victory. We're gonna let your praises loud. Oh, the enemy has been defeated, death couldn't hold you down. We're gonna lift. We're going to make your praises loud. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto God with the voice of praise. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We bring your name up. We lift your name up. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto God with the voice of praise. Yes. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto God with the voice of praise. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Praise the Lord. 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 Praise the
praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You, you can be seated tonight. The Lord bless you. Um, tonight I'm going to give a little bit of time for some testimonies. And just remember what a testimony is. It's not a, it's, it's not a prayer request. We're not asking what's wrong. We're not asking what's, what you need help with. And then we're glad to do that. But a testimony is something that God has already done. Praise God. And all you want to do is stand and give him the glory for what he has done in Jesus' name. So we're going to go ahead and open it up tonight for a few testimonies. Uh, this is optional. You don't have to do this. But if you've got something that you want to declare that God has done, I'm going to tell you something. I think it's the will of God for you to stand and say it in Jesus' name. Anyone on all? Okay, I'll tell you what. Over on my right over here, uh, back here in, in, in what we call the cheaper seats. <laughs> Anybody at all want to stand and give, give, give a testimony in Jesus' name? Praise God. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Nice and loud. If, you, if, you, if you're not going to be loud, you've got to use the microphone, okay? All right. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's acknowledge that by clapping our hands with him right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God has been good. God has been good. Okay, anyone else over here on my right and towards the middle here? Anybody in the middle? Yes, go ahead. <coughs> nice and loud. That's awesome. That's awesome. Let's give him praise for that. You can trust in the Lord. You can trust in the Lord. Okay, yes, go ahead. All right. He does that, doesn't he? Hallelujah. That's good. That's good. He takes the scales away from your eyes in Jesus' name. Anyone else here on this side here in the middle? Go ahead, sis. Go ahead. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Trade your worry for his peace. That's good. Hallelujah. Awesome. Awesome. Anyone else over here? Amen. Praise God. How about over in this area here? Anybody got a testimony they want to stand? We got two of them here. Ladies first. Go ahead. Go ahead. Then you, Marv, you're next. Come on, that's right. That one's worth millions. In Jesus' name. Yes. Go ahead, brother. Hey. Good, amen and amen. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? Anybody else? Just opening it up tonight. Go ahead.
Praise God. Praise God. Maybe one more. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen. Anyone else? One more, maybe. One more tonight. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Amen. He's a God that's on time. Come on, he's a God that's on time. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Now listen, folks, I, 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 this is exciting, isn't it? Knowing that God is operating in, in, in our midst in Jesus' name. But tonight, if you have any, any special areas of your life that need attention in Jesus' name, I also want to remind you you're in the right place in Jesus' name. Praise God. And so if you want to stand up tonight and you want to come down to this altar and you want to have special prayer for needs in your life, praise God, I'm going to open that up right now in Jesus' name. And we're going to pray the prayer of faith because God is able, isn't he? Okay. Wasn't that already proclaimed? He's able to do exceeding abundant above all that we ask or think, praise God. But it's according to the power that works in us. What does that mean? That just means we got to have faith in him in Jesus' name. And so tonight, here we go again, praise God. We're going to believe God for his answers in Jesus' name. Tonight, tonight, you come to the right place. Tonight, come on, in Jesus' name, praise God. Now listen to me, folks. We already prayed the prayer earlier that his will is more important than our will. So I think that's important that we realize that, praise God, in when we present our needs to him. That God, yes, we want you to do this for me. Maybe it's a pain that you have. Maybe it's a situation in your life. But never, never, never underestimate the will of God, praise God. Because he can cover a lot of things in Jesus' name. I'll tell you what. The rest of you that haven't come down, I would, if, I would appreciate if you'd just begin to pray with me in Jesus' name. And I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to anoint every person. And I'm going to believe God to touch them for those specific needs His way. Come on, shout that at me. His way. Come on, shout it at me again. His way. His way. Praise God. And so let's begin to pray. As you want somebody praying with you, why don't you pray for somebody else?
Come on, we've been anointed in the name of Jesus. Why don't we go ahead and lift our hands up together right now? Come on, you claim the promises of God. I'm telling you, the promises of God are true. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, they are. In the name of Jesus, they are true. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh. Hallelujah. Shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Oh, what does that mean? Come on, that means that I'm going to do it even though it hasn't come yet. Oh, in the name of Jesus. That means I'm going to exercise my faith tonight. Oh, that's right. Come on, I believe that's the answer for somebody here. Shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Shout unto the voice of triumph. Oh. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. Yes, that's it. That's it. Hallelujah, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I don't know exactly the year that it was written, but I know it was written towards the latter portion of this King James Version Bible, and, and I know that there were things that were going on that were, um, you know, that were testing their faith at that time, too. Uh, Jude is, is, is one that, that wrote this book, and he just talked about some things that I think that are worth mentioning here tonight in the name of Jesus. He said in verse number 18 of Jude, he said, um, he talked about the fact that how that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time. He went on to say who should walk after their own ungodly lusts or their passions. They've got their own agendas, what it is. And that's what we have to be careful of, praise God, is that we don't allow our agenda to get in the way of God's agenda. Never forget that, folks. That's what we want. We want his will to be done in Jesus' name. I'm going to talk about that here in a few minutes, and I think it's going to be very important for us to be able to handle that. Your will be done on this earth as it already is in heaven, praise God. Then Jude went on to say, these be they who separate themselves sensual having not the spirit amen it goes on to say but ye beloved and that's talking to the church here in my opinion he said building up yourself on your most holy faith amen a lot of what we do in these services are, 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 are a, a considerable amount let me put it this way is in regards to that building up our faith exercising our faith having faith in God and never forget the definition is that now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Amen. And so that's where I believe the voice of triumph comes in, that we know that God's going to do it. We know that God's going to bring that to pass. But there are times when there's other things that are actually that needing to be straightened out, praise God, before that. And I'm not, I'm not saying that God won't do it, but sometimes we just have to realize it's in his time in Jesus' name. And so building up ourselves on our most holy faith is what God wants us to do. And not just any faith, folks. The Bible talks about, in the doctrines of Christ, it talks about faith towards God, having faith in him, having faith in what he wants to do, praise God. And so then it goes on to say praying in the Holy Ghost. And many of you, when you come to a church like this, a Pentecostal church that believes in the outpouring of the Spirit, you hear that. You hear people praying in the Spirit. Sometimes it will be in a tongue that you can understand. Sometimes it won't be. But believe me, folks, that's a major part of it, praise God, learning how to pray in the Spirit. And then it says keeping ourselves in the love of God. This is something that's going to get a little more testy as times go on. Jesus even ma made reference to the fact, he said, because the love of many will wax cold, you know, because sin will abound. 
Sometimes we have a tendency to want to give up, and, and, and we've got to be careful with that one, that we keep ourselves in his love, looking for his mercy, and for our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Praise God. Amen. I heard a pastor's wife say one time, she was an elderly woman. She's much older than I was at the time, and I'll never forget her saying. She says, just remember this, that one second after you die or the rapture takes place, you're going to be in the presence of the Lord for eternity. And she said everything else is just going to be by the wayside. Nothing else is really going to matter that much. And she says you are going to be in his presence in Jesus' name. And I've never forgotten that, praise God. I've never forgotten that. He that endureth until the end shall be saved. And so God has given us specific instructions, and he's given us people in our life and a church where we can go and we can be encouraged in that regard in Jesus' name. Don't forget that. Praise God. From time to time in the prayer room, for those of you that aren't frequenting it, um, we have the Lord will give us a word. And one of the things that I've been initiating here of late um, uh, uh, more so is that when a word of the Lord comes and in, in, into that prayer room, I have confidence in it. I do. I sense that God will speak to us. So you must understand something. I, I think this would be a valuable place to, um, to insert this. Go with me to the, um, to the 12th chapter of the book of um, Corinthians. Corinthians chapter number 12. And this, of course, is where Paul... Um, I, I'm not going to say he introduced it, but he was, um, he was teaching 12, chapter number 12 of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, okay? And this is where he's talking about the spiritual gifts, and I think the spiritual gifts are very, very, very important, amen. But like we talked about this morning when it came to the, um, um, uh, to the uh, communion service, it's important that we enter into these kind of things in the attitude that God wants us to enter into them. Amen. I, I'm, never, I'm not going to deny that sometimes spiritual gifts can get a little bit out of hand, you know, especially in the hands of human beings. And I'm not saying that's happening around here. I'm just saying there's always a potential for that. And somebody says, well, if that ever happens, then we better shut them down. Well, that's what they did back in the 50s and the 60s because of the latter rain movement. In this country after World War II, and you can study this, you know, or not study it, but you can, you can trace this in our, our modern history. After World War II, there seemed to be um, an acceleration of, of, of faith healers. Somebody said at one time in America between, I think it was the year uh, 1950 and, and 1960, there were some 200 faith preachers out there preaching healing. And a lot of it was real. Some of it wasn't, and I'm not here to stand in judgment, you know. Just like uh, Jude said, you know, there's going to be people who mock this. There's going to be people who aren't doing it for the right reason. And, you know, I think God's smart enough and he's powerful enough to take care of that amongst us. But that doesn't mean that we should shut it down just because it's being maybe misused from time to time. That's where, in my opinion, God gives a pastor, spiritual teacher in the church to instruct my goodness, how many here have ever ridden a bike? Let me see your hands. Did you just one day get up when you were a kid and just hop on that bike and had no accidents? You didn't mess up one bit. You just went down the street, and, and they look, you looked like you were riding a bike for 10 years. No, I, I didn't think that was true either. How many got a lot of skinned knees? Yeah, how many got a few skinned elbows? How many got a real huge bruised ego? Yeah. Well, let me ask you a question. Did, that, did, did you just throw the bike away? You just say, well, I'm not going to ride it anymore. Well, come on. I, I understand I'm using a pretty obvious example here, but I look at the same way with spiritual gifts, that sometimes we really don't understand it completely. We know it's there. When you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you really know it's there. There's no question in my mind. You know something is happening. But sometimes it's like Paul said, we see, you know, kind of, um, through an, what is it, the old page window, you know, where they'll soap windows and stuff like that so you can't see what's going on. You know something's going on in there, but you just can't see it clearly. Well, give time to the purpose, praise God. And I believe that God will begin to help us to be instructed. And he will help us to bring forth these things as he, as he wants them to be. Because you've got to understand something here. Let me read some scripture to you. The Bible says, 
in, in verse number one. I'm in the 12th chapter of, of, of Corinthians, and I just switched modes here, and I, and I think I'm in the will of God. It says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. That's without information. He said, I want you to, to know what's going on. You might not understand it all, but I do want you to know what's going on. And then he went on to say, you know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. It says, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. You got to understand something there with that verse of scripture that there are some things that if you don't believe in these things, if you don't allow God to move in you in this dimension, you're just not going to get done. And I didn't say that, Paul did. He said this is by the Holy Ghost that these things can happen. That's why I'm not, I'm not forcing you into a comfort zone with where some of the levels of, of spiritual understanding are in this church. But I'm asking you to cut us a little slack and keep coming back. If something gets out of, out of, a, um, you know, out of, out of place here, believe me, um, uh, you pray for me. And I, I'm, I'm telling you, I, it's like I said this morning about the communion service. I take these things extremely serious. I do. This is my life. This is my calling. This is what God has put on my heart. And so... It's like tonight, switching gears. I don't have a problem with that. Whatever God wants to do, I'm for it. But I understand that there's going to be people that are going to struggle with it. I did, praise God. And so I, I have learned to expect it. Amen. And then he goes on to say, look at verse number four here. He says, now there are diversities of gifts. They're not all the same, but there's only one spirit that gives them. Now remember that. You don't cut God into pieces. He's one. But he can do many, many, many different things. And that's good because I'm going to tell you something, folks. One of the safeguards that I've seen in, 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 in what I would call the real apostolic church is that God is never going to let one person do it all. Never. And it's, there's reason for that. Because God doesn't want anybody to get the big head. He wants us to learn not only to trust in him, but to trust in his method and allow people to participate in Jesus' name. And so I understand that concept, and I'm, I'm very comfortable with it. But look at verse number five. Here's one that people don't really see. The Bible says, and there are differences of administrations. There's different ways for them to come forth. Amen. That's why I used to think that any time that God was going to interpret a word, you know, in our English language so we could think of it. I used to think, and this is years ago, I used to think that somebody had to come out and work themselves up and speak out in a loud tongue. And I've realized that's not, that doesn't have to happen. God can interpret his word any time he wants to. Now, I've seen that happen lots of times. And again, I'm very comfortable with that method, but it's not the only way. Amen. There's a word of wisdom that can operate just like that. You can walk up to somebody and you can begin to show or tell them something that you found in the word of God and it'll work that way. And boy, believe me, folks, it's sharp. It is powerful in Jesus' name. And then in verse number six, not only is there differences in administration, you know, effect the way it works, but there's differences in operations, the way, it, um, the way, it's, the way it's presented. That's why you must understand something, folks. God doesn't take away your personality when you operate in the gifts of the Spirit. A lot of times he will use that. And this is what we get scared of sometimes. Because I know people in the kingdom of God that are very demonstrative, very loud. And that's their personality. And so when the gifts of the Spirit operate through them, wow. It's almost like, ooh, they don't need a microphone. But then now listen to me, folks. Let's go to the opposite end. I know that there are people in this church right now that are very meek. They're very unobtrusive. That's not the way they are. And if you expect them to operate 
the way somebody who has a personality that is very boisterous. I personally think you're wrong. I think we better be careful on that one. And I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I think that's kept some of you from operating. Because maybe you don't have that demonstrative way of coming across. And listen to me, folks. That doesn't mean that God can't use you in the gifts. That doesn't mean that at all. You see, I'm going to tell you something, folks. What we've done, and, and we do it because we think it should be, is we want a one size fits all. Now, I didn't say multiple spirits, but there are multiple ways of operation and administration. And, and, and someone who is praying and, 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 and fasting, you know, for the Lord on a regular basis will really, really begin to, they'll begin to understand that. And that's where our church is at right now. Many of you are, and I don't mean this to slam you, but you are in a, a very entry-level way for whatever reason. Maybe you got burned 10 years ago or something like that, and somebody did something in the church, and it ticked you off, and you just took it upon yourself to say, I'm never going to do that again, and you come back around. I understand that takes a while for that to get healed. We got all kinds of people in this church in all diversities of life. And then maybe for really for the first time in your life, you've experienced Pentecost. But I'm here to tell you, folks, I'm comfortable with it all because I believe that the Spirit can minister in these kinds of settings in Jesus' name. Now watch this. And I don't know how far I'm going to go tonight, Sister Carnahan. I'm just going to have to stop when he tells me to stop. But I feel like I'm in the right chapter. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the right verses right now. The Bible says in verse number 7, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, verse number 7, it says, But the manifestation of the Spirit, listen to this, this is important, is given to every man for profit. The Spirit doesn't tear things down. It doesn't have to. God will use other ma methods to do that. The gifts of the Spirit are for building up. That's what they're for. They're supposed to help you nourish you, give you more faith. But unfortunately, some people have used them for the wrong purpose. And I wish I didn't say that, I wish I didn't have, or I wish I didn't have to say this, but I have been in services where I have seen that happen. Now, I'm not critiquing, I'm not judging, I'm not, I'm not. It, it doesn't phase my faith one bit, but I have seen it. And I know there's a few of you out there right now that that's why you're leery. Because maybe you're a product of that. Maybe somebody has come to you when it really was their idea and they tried to sell you on it was God's. I'm telling you folks, you need to be and I need to be sensitive to the Lord. If you don't have a regular prayer and fasting life going on right now, I don't know what I'm going to have to do to get you to get one going. I am serious as a heart attack, folks. If you think you can just sit in the bleachers and everything is going to be okay because of what's going on down there in that field, you are greatly mistaken. This is a participant thing. This is not meant to be observed up in the high bleachers. That's again why some of you are struggling. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is for everyone. It's not just for a select group so that they can come and run everything in the church. It's for everyone so that we'll all be sensitive to what God is doing. Because if you study this, and I know I'm not going to get that far tonight, but you're going to find that Paul gave the analogy of a, of a body. And that body needs to be well. That body needs to function totally. Now, understandably, some parts aren't as obvious as others, but they're all important. And that's what God is trying to really get across to this, this, this church right now. I, I can sense that. Oh, my goodness. He is trying to help you understand that he has placed you in the kingdom of God for such a time as this. And if you'll allow him to let you grow and begin to trust him, have faith in him, believe in him, put down USA Today and pick up the Bible, quit 
get off of Facebook and get on his book. Oh. But it's the truth. There is too many of us that are trying to mix the world in with the word of God. And that's where we get these crazy ideas. Now again, I'm not, I'm not tearing you down. I'm just trying to give you information. This is what's happening in the American church. And this is why the things of God don't flow like, they, like he wants them to. Jesus told us, he said, if you believe on me, if you believe on me as the scripture saith, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. And of course, it says in the King James Version Bible that this he spake of the spirit, which was not poured out yet. And so it is poured out now, and it's for the purpose, praise God, of profiting. It's for the purpose of helping every individual in the church. And this is what God wants to do in this hour, praise God. And then in verse number 8, 9, and 10, he lists nine specific gifts. Look at what it says here. He says, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Amen. It goes on to say to another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. Amen. God can do this. He talks about another faith. And I believe that's supernatural faith. You've heard me teach it before, that you have a, what I call a, um, an idling faith, that you should always believe that God can do things. Praise God. And then it talks about the gifts of healing. Notice the word plural there in gifts. God can heal in ways that we don't even know. And, of course, we're ones, we can pick out somebody in, in a church service that needs healing in the physical realm because we got two eyes. But that might not even be the problem. The problem might be a mental blockage, that if that was taken out of the way, automatically things could begin to put themselves into place. Last week, I think it was, or the week before, I can't remember, it's all running together, but I talked about a domino effect. And how if we can get these things lined up and if we can just push that one thing over, praise God, all kinds of things can come into play. And I believe in my, personally, I believe that the gifts of the Spirit are for that purpose, to help that. Supernatural things that you and I cannot do. Amen. And so he lists these things. And then he talks about the working of miracles and the prophecy and another discerning of spirits and to another diverse kinds of tongues. Notice that. We're talking about all kinds of things. If you'd have been in our prayer room tonight, I, I don't know, I don't count them all the time, but I probably counted five or six. I'm telling you the truth. Tongues of travail, tongues, tongues of warrior, praying tongues, worshiping tongues. I mean, they were all over the place. But if you're going to just hone them down to one thing, my goodness, no wonder we have a hard time with God. And why can't God be doing one thing in my life and another thing in his life at the same time? Why do we struggle with that? We really shouldn't, folks, because he's God. And most of the time, he's going to do that via the Spirit. That's how he's going to do it in Jesus' name. Now, I'm not going to be very long tonight. I don't think I need to be, you know, to be honest with you. We've had a beautiful demonstration of the Holy Ghost out here. And that's good. We want that. We want liberty. But I understood and I sensed that there were some of you, because I, I, I asked God to help me to be that way. But I sense that some of you are just a bit uncomfortable with that. And so I'm not here to reprimand you. I'm not here to say, well, hey, you know, you better or else. I am here to help you. That's why I'm deliberately taking the time tonight, like I did this morning, to explain some things and help us to understand what is going on in Jesus' name. Let me give you a for instance. And, and tonight I did it, too, because we had, I think, three different interpretations. And Paul gave us, he said, that's, that's enough in one group. Because sometimes you can get way out there with that. And he said two, maybe three. But he said, after that, you need to kind of shut it down. Now, I don't have time to get into that teaching, but it's in there, okay? The 14th chapter covers that, by the way. 
But what I'm getting in the habit of doing is asking these people that when they have this interpretation, and I did it again tonight, write it down. And if nobody else in the, in the building is interested in it, I am. And I'm not saying I'm in interested in it right, right, right off the bat, but I keep it in my, in my little file here. And, 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 and again, today, God brought one of them to my mind. I'm here uh, uh, almost a month ago, the 21st of February. We were in the prayer room. It was a Sunday night, I think. I believe it was. I don't check my calendar, but that's what it is. And a tongues and interpretation went forth. And here's how it read. It read, I continue. Now, this is the Lord speaking, you know, what he wants us to hear. He said, I continue to give you visions of light and darkness. The walls have been put up for your protection. But you keep opening the door. Fortify yourselves and close those doors. Now, that's a message from God. And I'm smart enough to realize that, I don't know how many people we got in this room right now, but that could affect in multiple different ways and get how many things done. You know, people are allowing God to do things, and, and it's just a habit we get into, folks. I was in this habit for years, and, and I'm trying to get rid of the habit, is I want to live the same way in here that I live out there. No, I'm not talking about the way I praise. I'm talking the way I believe. My faith level. I want it to be as high in here as it is out there. And that is a full-time job. I'm telling you that right away that you're not going to get that done by just casually entering into his presence and basking and thanking God for what he does on Sunday nights or Sunday mornings or Wednesday night. you got to go to work in your own home. And that's the place I would suggest that you do it first. You can't go to your neighbor's home and say, listen, I go to church, and so I want you to start living for God. I don't want you cussing around me. I don't want you out there, you know, naked. I don't want any of that happening around here now because I go to church. They'd probably put some of us away if we did that, wouldn't they? Now, I'm not saying that isn't a good idea. I'm just saying that's not where it starts. It starts with me. I'm going to go home. I'm going to look through my video library. I'm going to look through my bookshelves. I'm going to look through my music things. And I'm going to start being very selective. And I'm not going to start listening and watching stupid things that are going to tear down my faith. Now, come on, folks. When I came into the church, they told us to throw the TVs away. That was their answer. Until video came along. Until iPhones popped up. Until computers really came into play. Then that TV was about as, about as obsolete as you could get it. Most of you don't even have TVs anymore as, as, as they were defined back then when I came in the church. So what's the deal? The deal is I'm not going to preach against electronics as much as I'm going to preach against you better watch that. And you better watch it on Mondays. And you better watch it on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays and Saturdays. Not just get reminded of it on Sunday night. Now, come on, folks, I'm trying to make perfect sense right now. And I'm not the one that's going to critique it. I believe it's God that's going to begin to convict you. Hey, come on, folks. Can God convict us in church? Come on, give me a big amen. amen. Yeah, I, I think he can too. That's why a lot of people stop coming. But listen to me. Why can't he convict us at home? Why can't he convict us in the, in the car? Why can't he convict us everywhere we go? There really is no, no, uh, no negative answer there, folks. He wants to. And he will do that if you will let him. And believe me, then you will begin to see that your faith label, le le level doesn't have to deplete to the you know, anemic place to where you can hardly make it through the next day. Oh, my God, I hope I don't get tempted more than three times this hour because I'm going to go to hell. I'm, I know I'm being a little bit, but it's the truth. 
Now, come on, folks. We need to be able to retain these things that God gives to us. That's what he wants to do. He wants to help you to be powerful wherever you go. No, that doesn't mean you're never going to make a mistake. No, that doesn't mean that you're never going to have difficult times and that kind of stuff. But it just means that they're not to the level that they used to be. And this is what God is doing. And through the spiritual gifts, I believe that God is letting us know about that. He's saying, I'm showing you visions of light and darkness. I'm giving you the, I'm telling you what's good and what isn't, and isn't good. And he says, I have put walls. It's called holiness, by the way. He puts holiness in our lives to build walls around this world. But we keep, and, 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 and according to this, we keep opening the door and letting them in. Back in the Old Testament, they had what they called gatekeepers. These were people that were assigned to specific gates. In the city, the city of Jerusalem in particular, there was like, I forget how many, nine or ten different gates. And not one person could, could, um, could guard all of them. So they had to assign different people at these different gates. Maybe sometime I'll do a teaching on it. It's, it's, it's phenomenal what it could teach us. But let me just put it to you simply tonight. You are the gatekeeper of this. You are the gatekeeper. That's why the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, mindsets, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And then it says having a readiness. See, we got to get ready, folks. Having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when our obedience is fulfilled. And just so you won't get nervous, folks, you're always going to struggle with your flesh. You're always going to struggle with it. But as long as you know, praise God, that really is half the battle. Some of you are making the big mistake, and I think this is the door that's being opened to some of you is that you think that your flesh can be eradicated, or not eradicated, but it can be domesticated. That's what you're making a mistake. And you want to pamper it, and you want to give it a vacation. And after coming here and praying and doing all these things that we do in the spirit, you go home and you want to just kind of pamper your flesh. You make a big mistake doing that. Because your flesh will never be domesticated. The carnal mind is enmity with God. And so that's where the spiritual gifts can help us. It can help us to get to a place where we recognize this. Not perfection. That's coming later. But it'll give us help in Jesus' name. God wants to help somebody close a door tonight. And if you're brave enough to admit that in your life right now, you could stand and we will pray another prayer. I'm talking about is there a door in your life that needs to be nailed shut? I'm not asking you to tell me what it is. I'm just saying, come on, you, you admit to the fact that this is you. This word here is for you. Oh, wow. Amen. Now you tell me if the spiritual gifts are working in this place or not. I believe they're working in Jesus' name. Now let's pray for one another. Let's not try to figure out what our neighbor's problem is now. Let's not try to hide ours. Come on. Why don't you do this on your own right now? Why don't you lift up both of those hands right now? I'm talking about by yourself. You as a human being that says God is more important than anybody else in my life right now. Come on, and you offer him up a confession. You offer him up an admission. You say, God, I admit right now that I have played that game in Jesus' name. And God, I know that you're not angry at me. I know that you're not here to rake me over the coals, but you are here to help me in the name of Jesus, to close these doors, to help me to live the life that you designed for me in the faith. In Jesus' name. There you go. Come on, somebody here is receiving this. Somebody here is very serious about what they're doing right now. I can sense that in the Holy Ghost. This is not a cure-all, but this is a good start.
heart in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. That's it. Come on. We're going to linger for at least another minute. Praise God. I don't think we should hurry through this one. I think we should just let God do whatever he wants to do in the name of Jesus. Oh, that's it. That's it. I can sense Mm, in the name of Jesus, that he is able to do exceeding abundant above all that we ask or think, but it is according to the power that works in us. And as long as we're able to admit it, praise God, and say, God, I got a problem in this area, praise God, and I'm expecting your help. Come on, you're going to get help in the name of Jesus. He is one that helps us. He is one that designed this thing, praise God, to, to work in the name of Jesus. Oh, how Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. We learned this morning that he came peacefully the first time. He rode on a, on a donkey that had never been ridden on before. He tamed that animal and came to Jerusalem in peace. He wasn't mad at anybody. And the Bible says he came bringing salvation. He was willing to go to that cross. He was willing to shed his blood. I'm telling you right now, you can have confidence in a God. God like that in the name of Jesus. He loves you. He cares for you. Come on, somebody's emptying out here tonight. And I'm going to tell you something. God wants to fill you in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. That's it. I'll tell you, this will do wonders for your kids. This will do wonders for your, for your relatives in the name of Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Come on. God works with the first person most of the time. He's dealing with me when I read his Bible. Oh, that's it. Come on, grow comfortable in this. Grow comfortable in this. Expect it to happen. He's not going to let you get away with things. Come on. We don't want him to. We don't want him to let us get away with things. We want him to convict us and help us in the name of Jesus. Come on. I feel that urgency right now. Come on. Somebody could take it to another level and you could come to this altar tonight and get on your knees and say, God, I'm not going to quit until this thing's under the blood. In the name of Jesus, I'm telling you, folks, that kind of a Holy Ghost is in this place right now. It's what brings repentance into the place. And I'm telling you, when repentance is into the place, anything can happen. Anybody can get filled with the Holy Ghost if they'll repent. Come on, God told us that already. He said, if you'd be repenting, I'll forgive. Come on, I'm sensing that right now in this place, in the name of Jesus. That's right, folks. Come on, we got to get rid of this embarrassment. We got to get rid of this shyness that says, I don't want anybody to know. I don't care who knows. I know he knows in the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. Come on. You come down. You are free to come down. You are free to receive the things of God in the name of Jesus. They're here. They're for you. They're for you. Come on. The spiritual gifts are for our profit. God is trying to help us. He's not trying to embarrass you. He's trying to help you. That's it. Come on. Get rid of that pride. Get rid of that arrogance that says I need to hide things. They did that in the garden. Come on, folks. We don't need to do that here. Oh, mataharo. Yele no yele motasha. In the name of Jesus. That's see it. Come on. Come on. Let's press through. We got a little time here tonight. We don't have to say, hey, I got to get somewhere. You're in the right place right now. Mm, yes. Let God work on us. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, I don't even have to lay my hands on anybody. God's already doing that. His spirit's at work right here. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Come on. I'm telling you, getting the Holy Ghost is easy if we We'll repent if we'll just admit we're doing something wrong. I'm telling you, getting the Holy Ghost is God's way of saying, yeah, I got confidence in you. I got confidence in you. You're not perfect yet, but I'm still going to give you my spirit. I'm still going to let you be filled with me in the name of Jesus. There's no greater privilege, folks. There's no greater privilege in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Mm. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
Oh, blessed be to the name of the Lord. Come on, it's still here, folks. It's still here. There are plenty of people that are still, praise God, they're looking, they're seeking, they're finding in the name of Jesus the things of God. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Oh, I'm so glad, God, that you let us know that your information is free, that you're not going to let us get into some kind of deception, that you're going to protect us, that these are your gifts. This is your church. This is not somebody's. We don't own this. We have no, no license to this. This is you. You've done this, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Would you do something here tonight? Can we pray for this area right now that God would begin to deal with them? Come on, I'm telling you, what's going on in this place tonight, it could happen in a living room. It could happen at a kitchen table. It could happen at a break room. We don't have to wait to come to church to feel the Lord, but come on, that's where our mindset is. We've reached a place where we can only do certain things in church. Come on, God wants to do it everywhere. Mm, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. That's it, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, wow, wow, wow. If you're directed, just lay your hands on that person next to you right now. Pray for them. Pray for them right now. Oh, Jesus, let that go forth, Lord God. Let it flow. Let there be a river of living water that's flowing in this place, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. That's it, Lord God, that's it. You've come to help. You've come to do these things for us, Lord God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Blessed be to the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. Mm, hallelujah. That's right. Maybe we could close our eyes for just a minute or so. Let's just close our eyes right now. And let's just let God just move amongst us. Oh, it's so good how he does it in Jesus' name. Oh, mandori. No sadaboko homandere achia. Yes, Jesus. No toho koro mononde le mai maminiat. That's it, that's it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing, how you're doing it, Lord. Oh, Jesus, that's it. Heal. Begin to move upon our minds and heal our hearts, Lord God. Oh, things are not that bad. Not with you. Oh, not with you, Lord God. Things are not that bad. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Encourage, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Mm, blessed be to the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm, hallelujah, Jesus. Blessed be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The scripture uses the terms that the eyes... Here, let me show it to you here real quick, and, and then I think I'm done. Praise God. Look at um, Ephesians, the book of Ephesians. And Karen, you can put it up on the screen if you don't mind. Ephesians chapter number 1. Ephesians chapter number 1. And I'm going to begin reading <coughs> in verse 16. 16. This was Paul's prayer for that group of people. And basically, in my opinion, like most of the epistles, they were universal. They were meant for people like you and I hundreds of years later. That's why we can read them, and they can still be tremendously advantageous to us because of the content. That's spirit, folks. That's not talent. 
I know you can count all the good authors in this world, and I'm sure we have this world seen a lot of good authors, but there, it's nothing like this. There is nobody written a book or written something to somebody 2,000 years ago, and somebody picks that book up 21 or 2,000 years later, and it's like, whoa, that guy's speaking directly to me. That's not talent. That's God. And that's why this book is so valuable, praise God. But he says, cease not, this is Paul, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Paul prayed for him. He said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Never forget that. It's not in us, it's in him. The more we can know about him, the better off we can, we're going to be. And the scripture specifically tells us that eye hath not seen, neither ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of a person the things that God has in store for them. But, the Bible says, he has revealed them to us by his spirit. That's the way God has chose to reveal things to us. And so Paul is right in line with this. Then he says in verse 18 something extremely important. And I think it's happened here tonight, by the way. It says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, illumined, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. See, it goes a lot deeper than what's happening to us right now. A lot deeper. And then it says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power. And then he goes on to say, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. I won't go there, but in chapter number two, it mentions this at least three times, that we can together reach heavenly places places, things that will make sense, perfect sense in heaven. But down here, we struggle with it. That's why I'm telling you, you will always struggle with your flesh. You will. And that's why you got to learn, praise God, not to pay near as much attention to it as you are. I really believe that's a door that somebody is contemplating closing here tonight in Jesus' name. Praise God. God is good, folks. He is great in Jesus' name. Would you lift your hands one more time? And let's give God thanks. Can we do that? Can we give him thanks for what he's doing? Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Take joy. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you, O oh my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Can we thank God for it one more time?
Jesus' name, the Lord, the peace, and the grace of God be multiplied to each and every one of you. I mean that. Be multiplied to you in Jesus' name. Until we meet again, live for him. Rejoice in him. Pray to him. Get to know him. Do that. While, we, while we're absent from one another. And then when we come back together, it'll only enhance what he can do together with us in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you tonight in Jesus' name. God bless you.